from uh, Accra in Ghana. So as I uh, approach the last few days of my uh, little adventure here, uh, I thought I'd just uh, cover off a few things that, uh, that might be helpful for anyone considering travelling to this beautiful country. Um, before I left, uh, you've got to apply for a, uh, a visa to get into the country and, and that was quite a simple process. Um, once I had a letter from my host, Tina, uh, sent it off to the High Commission in, um, in Canberra, $100 fee, and within three days uh, I had a visa for Ghana. So very, very simple process. So that was quite painless and, uh, and easy. Um, getting through customs at, uh, at Cra was very, very simple. It was one of the easiest uh, passages uh, through a, a, a customs I've ever done, so um, uh, good work there. So this is your ham salad. What's that one? It's like a couscous or something. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And just roast chicken. My stay here, I stayed in a, a rural area um, about two hours, two and a half hours from the capital city, Accra, uh, in a little area called Borajiasi, I think it's pronounced. I'll put a link in the video. Um, very beautiful area. It's quite remote. It's pretty hard to get in there because the road there is under construction. It's about a 20 kilometre road that's under construction, and all the locals claim it's a uh, a road being built for the next election which is coming up later this year in uh, Ghana um, but I found the, the, the rural area really really quite beautiful very peaceful um, I was the only white person there I saw a couple of missionaries wander around one day but for the, the entire period I spent out there I was the only white man so that was a um, uh, quite strange I guess for the poor locals seeing this bald old white man wandering around the place all the time uh, look, the locals are very, very friendly. At never any stage did I feel um, uh, unsafe or anything. Everyone was so friendly. Uh, everyone greets you with a smile. Um, everyone says good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's a real pleasure. They're so friendly. They're very warm, very inviting. Everyone wants to have a chat, which was nice. Um, and again, it was just uh, uh, very easy. They all, well, most people speak uh, English, um, but I think the local language is a preferred um, dialect they're using, uh, conversing with each other. But uh, yeah, just about everyone speaks English, so uh, uh, communicating here is very, very simple. <laughs> What's she doing? No, I know. Oh, what are you trying to talk about? Oh, ah, mommy, I think. <laughs> Comes a tray tray. Don't worry, I'm getting as a chair, so we sit here. I accepted that those recordings were our voices and all the things that went on, we discussed them. Fine, they tried to skip some and try to defend themselves in a way. This alone is enough proof to do what? To fish out whatever that went on and find <laughs> whatever investigation. How long will it take? I said, this is my now. question. How long so should will I, it should take? I, should, I, should I talk? talk. <laughs> I've never interjected you. When talk. Talk. Are you in your Ah, he's feeling it. Nobody did try this boy, nah, that's why this boy, nobody did try, nobody did try. Chow! 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 Chow!
I wouldn't recommend coming here in February, March like I have. I arrived sort of halfway through February in the first week of March. Uh, it's the end of the season they call Hamartan, uh, which is a very hot northerly wind which blows all the bloody dust from the sub-Saharan area. So it's just pretty hot, pretty awful. The skies are not generally that clear um, some days, but it's just really stifling hot. Every day is 35 degrees and the humidity in the 90s. Um, they tell me that uh, about mid-March it starts to rain again and the weather cools. So any time from there would be just perfect here. And once the, the rain starts to fall and the hills start greening up, this would be just stunning here. So again, uh, don't come this time of year. Um, I'm a dill, uh, that's okay. Um, I can, li I can live with it, but I have enjoyed myself. Right, if you're coming here, forget credit cards. You'll need credit cards to go to the ATMs, but um, the ATMs are only local to, uh, located in the major centres. Cash is king. You have to have the local currency, which is a CD. Um, make sure you have plenty of it. Um, you'll need it for the trotros, the taxis, for the markets, uh, for the roadside sellers. Um, yeah, I think US dollars are used here, but um, I couldn't find a uh, currency exchange in the regional areas. Now I'm in Accra. Uh, the next few days I'll cash in some of the US dollars I've got here, but uh, uh, yeah, cash is king and the local currency. So whenever you go past uh, an ATM, uh, take advantage and, and get some cash out and keep that on you. They're different, they're really hot peppers, are they? Yeah, these are These are milder. This one's also hot. This one's also hot. What is this? Palm oil. Oh, palm oil. Hello. How are you? While you're here, you're going to need transport. Uh, this is a challenging country to move around. The, the, the road network is a nightmare. When the roads are good, they're chock a block. When the roads are bad, they're chock a block and bad. So uh, potholes, dust, uh, you name it, it's, it's poor. Uh, the Tro Tro is the preferred uh, choice. It, it is a little minibus. Uh, they're about eight to ten seater, they're clapped out, I don't know where they've come from, There's, they're everywhere. They travel up and down the road network on a daily basis. They're really cheap, um, they're really packed all the time, they smell, there's road fumes and dust and whatever else other mess. But the windows are always open, you get to experience the outdoors inside a minibus, but they are cheap and they're reliable and they run everywhere. It looks like chaos, but it's actually very well organised, so um, yeah, your tro tro is your, is your first choice a local version of a tuk-tuk here called a Pragia, um, a little yellow beast, three-wheeler. Uh, that takes you pretty much all around any of the areas where there's uh, uh, bitumen roads. They don't travel on the dusty roads, so usually around the market areas where there's better roads, you'll see the, the Pragias moving around. They're really cheap as well. They're great fun. Um, if you can get onto one of those, just a bit of a cruise around, why not? Uh, they're really, really cheap. few CDs for getting here and there, so look out for those. Taxis um, are everywhere, but they're always tiny little things there, the, uh, like a Toyota Yaris or other small, tiny, small cars. They get battered, the roads here are just terrible and just destroy these things, but they're a little bit more comfortable than the uh, uh, the Tro Tro, but the taxis certainly, um, uh, they're, they're okay. Uh, they do bottom out in some of the potholes here, or they have these improvised speed humps around the place, and they bottom out on them, so you do get a few clunks and bangs every now and then. Um, but more comfort ride. The occasional one might have air conditioning, not often, but um, you, might, you might be lucky enough to strike one with an air conditioner. Uh, they're much more expensive, uh, but you've got to negotiate a, negotiate the fare. They're not metered, so you, know, you need to have a fair idea of where you're going and what you need to pay, so that comes with a bit of local knowledge. Uh, luckily for me, I had uh, Tina and Harry with me the entire three weeks up here, so again, they've done most of the nego negotiation for all the taxis with me, so that made my life very, very easy.
Motorbikes are absolutely everywhere. I don't think they're under any sort of uh, scheme, of, like you know, Uber or something like that. They just seem to be private guys. Um, I rode them a few times. The guys are very, very competent riders, and I felt very safe at all times with these guys. They're ultra cheap. They can take you anywhere, so they'll actually take you off the main roads and into the shorter streets and some of the areas where the taxis and, and the, uh, the tray trays certainly don't go. So, great option for getting around quickly. Uh, again, cheap, good fun, in the open air, breathe the dust, suck it up, enjoy it, good fun. Just want to talk about the roads. There's a few main roads, and they're, 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 the ones around the city, uh, the capital, are quite good, although they are doing roadworks here at the moment. Um, so road um, congestion is an absolute nightmare and uh, yesterday coming back into a craft from the region we run into a roadblock where they just decided to uh, I don't know, do some construction and just shut the road in a moment's notice and just everybody had to turn around and go the other way which is fantastic so instead of taking two hours to get into the hotel it took uh, three and a half so anyway that's part of the fun here um, it's, just, it's just the way of life but the roads uh, the dirt roads are absolutely shocking. Um, potholes, the cars, the tray trays, they bottom out in some of the potholes. Uh, the dust is appalling. Uh, I'm sure when it rains, it hasn't really rained while I've been here, so I've got no idea what it's like, but I'm, I, I could safely assume that they'll turn into mud heaps. So, again, uh, the roads are bad. It's unfortunate for the people. They suck it up here, they don't complain. Um, I guess that's they're a pretty stoic bunch here. But uh, yeah, be prepared. That if you're going anywhere, if you think you look at something that's 100 kilometres away on Google Maps, there's a fair chance that 100 kilometres is going to take you five or six hours to get there. So be under no illusion, like I was, that you could just pick a spot and drive to it. It just simply doesn't happen. And you may have to change trotros three or four times, converse between a taxi. It's just hard work getting anywhere. Um, again, that's part of the adventure. So suck it up, enjoy. I did. It's good. Okay, so. If you need to buy anything around here, generally in, your, in the rural areas, forget shopping centres, they're not, they don't exist. Forget large shops, they don't exist. You have uh, uh, the market, uh, the markets pretty much sell everything, but there is market days where uh, it's much busier. Uh, I think the market's open all the time, but there's certainly market days uh, where the, uh, the market's full on and you can pretty much buy anything you need. But all along every road, there's a, there's a market seller selling something. Uh, they might be just selling dry goods, it could be fresh, go fresh goods, uh, there's little bakeries, uh, certainly uh, alcohol, there's little mechanics that are fixing things, little hardware, um, street sellers, there's hairdressers, so everything's done on the side of the road. Um, it's all pretty convenient uh, and it's all cheap, but that's how they do their business here in uh, most of the areas. Um, and, 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 and good luck to them. They, they work hard, these guys. They're sort of at it from 6 a.m. in the morning and you see them still there in the evening. So uh, they work hard. I don't think they earn a lot of money, but uh, uh, that's, that's the way of life here. And you can, again, if you need something, that's where you'll find it. Don't think, if you need, there, there are shopping centres here. They're close to the, the big c the city areas, but um, again, that's not where the fun is, is it? So you'll find the, the people are going are very sweet, very friendly, always wanting to have a chat. Uh, but don't let if that, that fool you in any way. These people are very, very tough. They're very resilient and they have to be because the conditions here just demand it. So, um, you know, from a very young age, you'll see these young kids carting water. Um, you know, three, four year olds with buckets on their heads carting something somewhere. So uh, they breed them tough here. Uh, don't worry about that. They're sweet, they're a sweet, friendly people, but they are tough. So Lake Volta uh, here gener as a, as a hydro power station on it and generates enough electricity for the entire country. However, Every single day you will experience power shedding for some reason. I don't, I can't explain it. The locals can't explain it, although they believe there's some governmental issues. I won't get into that, but uh, you'll experience power shedding. You'll experience, if you have plumbed water, not everyone has plumbed water, a lot of people just can't still cart water from a well. But if you have plumbed water, likely the water will go off for no apparent reason. Um, I used a internet provider called Air. Air Olo, I think it's called, which provides uh, a virtual SIM, so for data. Uh, and that worked sometimes, and I, I up topped it up a couple of days ago, and it hasn't worked since, so that was money down the drain. So things don't always work here. Um, anyway, it is. Let's talk about 
uh, the food. The food here is absolutely delicious. It's spicy. There's no doubt about that. It's spicy. Uh, I have a fairly good tolerance for spice, so probably wouldn't affect me. But if you don't like spicy food, then uh, be cautious, because when you're out in the, the the regional areas or the rural areas, that's what you're going to be eating. So uh, get used to it. Uh, the local staple here is foo foo. Um, watching them make it is hard work to make this food, but it is abs absolutely delicious, and it's served with a variety of soups and stews. It's just it's just silky smooth, and it's quite beautiful, and it just adds to the whole experience of uh, of, of, uh, of eating here. And it is, their, it is their king of the dishes. They do um, uh, jollof rice, which is again spicy, sort of a fr I think it's a fried rice, but that's served with a variety of meals, and that is also quite delicious. Uh, another one of the staples is bunku. I think bunku is cooked and then stirred over a pot for, a, it seems like, forever. Uh, that's again served in a similar way to uh, fufu, although they put it in a little plastic bag and you tear it off, it's a bit firmer. Uh, and you, you eat that with uh, things like tilapia and, and uh, dried fish and all that. It's, again, very, very delicious. A little, bit of a, a little bit of a bitterness about it, but it's actually quite nice. Uh, the staple here is dry. Sorry, there's dried fish, um, which looks pretty ordinary when you see it in the market, but uh, when it's cooked up, absolutely delicious. The staple fish is tilapia. Um, tilapia is delicious. I don't know what they put on the when they grill this tilapia. They put some sort of spice on the outside of it, but it is just outstanding. Uh, and I ate quite a lot of tilapia while I'm here. Um, never, never once had any upset stomach. Everything's cooked, but cook the day uh, you need it. It's all fresh every day, so yeah, I've had no problems with any sort of food problems here. Um, honourable mention to a thing called a tiger nut, which I'd never ever heard of until I got here, and they are just delectable little nuts that are quite sweet and chewy and uh, yeah, quite delicious. I found it interesting, no one smokes here. I didn't see cigarette sellers, I didn't see anyone smoking. What a what an absolute delight that was to, to, to experience. Another thing you don't see much here is the alcohol consumption. Um, you can buy booze and they have these little pubs around the place, but only, I think I only saw a couple of piss blokes on a couple of, on one occasion who wandered down the village and were, um, I think they were government officials pissed and carrying on, but anyway, um, other than that I didn't see anyone else, I've had a, I managed to find a, a beer seller very, very close who actually had icy cold beer and praise the Lord for her. Um, as I'm not going to post this video until I return to Australia, I want to talk about the police. The there are uh, police roadside checks pretty common around here, but on the road from Cape Coast back to Cassawa, there was in excess of 21 police roadside checks. Now, it's just bordering on ridiculous. It probably added another, it's a very, I think it's only like 120 k's between uh, Cape Coast and Cassawa, and it was ridiculous. It probably added another hour to the, to the uh, commute, but all they're doing is taking graft. They take graft from well, not every station takes graft, they sort of they share it around I guess, uh, but there is apparently I'm told there's a curfew of large trucks on the road after 6pm. Well, we left Cape Coast at 6pm and we saw nothing but large trucks and they all stop at the police checkpoints and they all move through so I guess uh, we could all assume what's happening there. Music. Music is everywhere here, it's just part of the culture, it's just a musical country. Um, you hear loud music, you see it, they, even the guys on motorbikes have got music playing, so it's it's quite fascinating. Um, there's an artist here called Daddy Lumbar and he's their national treasure, uh, and I've become a bit of an addict uh, of his music, he is really, really good. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance, go and have a listen to Daddy Lumbar. Look, there's a, there's a heap of great, talented musicians here, and I, I can't name them, but um, certainly have a look at the some of the local uh, musicians from Ghana and I think you'll be very surprised at how wonderful this music is produced here.
feels like I know you We love the same things You want a house in Malibu Are you feeling the same way I do? Are you feeling the same way I do?